So, yes, today uh, we will start with the session histology of the bone. So, yes, am I audible? Is the screen clear? So, that we can start the session. Yeah. So, let us start with the discussion. Before that, I would like to give the brief introduction of the platform. So, yeah, myself Dr. Mona Lisa and I have got a teaching experience of approximately 8 years. So, today in this session, we will start with the discussion of the histology of bone. So, these are the sessions details. So, if those who want to be the part of my free live sessions, they can use the code and add 10 for unlocking free sessions on the Anacademy platform. This is the uh, schedule for the whole month of June 2021. Okay. High Ilt Anatomy MCQ session 7.30 p.m. There is Conceptual Anatomy session 11.30 a.m. High Ilt MCQ session 9 p.m. And also Conceptual session 6 p.m. So, this is the referral code. Okay, this is the referral code and also the unlock code which can be used by you if you want to take the subscription of an academy or you want to avail the opportunity of being the part of free sessions on the an academy platform. So, these are all sessions of my anatomy high yield MCQ sessions which is taking place on the an academy platform free for you at uh, 9 pm session. Conceptual anatomy sessions, these are 6 pm sessions. Today is lower limb MCQ discussion session. Now, let us start with the uh, iconic subscription of an academy. So, for iconic subscription again you can use the code anat 10 ok, where there is merging of prep ladder and the an academy uh, group where you can avail the opportunity to be the part of each of this session. So, you will have the opportunity of being the part of live session and also availing the Q banks of prep ladder and recorded videos of prep ladder. Boost your preparation by taking 3 months of subscription and getting 1 month absolutely free. Again the other offer is taking 12 month of subscription and getting 2 months of subscription absolutely free. Download the Unacademy app, use the referral code and add 10 and then you can avail the opportunity of taking the subscription whichever suits you whether it is a few months or years whichever suits you how, how much time you have got for preparation according to that you can uh, just take the subscription. So, after taking the subscription, you have got the opportunity of being the part of live sessions on the plus platform, structured courses, weekly test series and unlimited SS. So, these are the benefits of taking plus subscription. The upcoming sessions are NEET PG session batch, the FMG MCQ batch, the INICT MCQ marathon batch and the target next 2022 batch. Okay. So, before starting the session, I would like to tell you the learning objective of the session. So, in this today's session, I would like to tell you about uh, the general features of the bone and identifying features of histological slide. So, let us start with the discussion now. So, okay. So, definition, bone is rigid form of scleral connective tissue in which the extracellular matrix is impregnated with inorganic substance. So, there is calcium phosphate and uh, included in the uh, ground substance and this is giving hardness to the bone. So, it is a form of a connective tissue, it is a special form of connective tissue. So, we will have the discussion of the histological aspect of the bone. Okay. So, yes. Now, firstly, I would like to uh, tell you about the general features of the bone and what we are studying in the general features. So, general features of the bone is that bone is rigid, hard, it is having, it acts as a liver for the muscular attachment, it is required for body weight, it protects the vital organs, stores calcium, phosphate and other ions and also contains bone marrow. So, these are the uh, general features of the bone. These are all general features of the bone. Now, types of the bone. So, morphologically if we see the bone is, uh, so what we have to know about the types of the bone that how many types of the bones are there and uh, this is very important for histological aspect. So, in morphological classification of the bones we have got compact bone and we have got spongy or cancellous bone. Two types of bones are there, one is the compact and the other is 
uh, spongy or cancellous bone okay so here you can see when we are talking about the compact bone it is the outer cell of long bones as you can see this is the part of the compact bone and the inner part of the bone which is containing the bone matrix and bone marrow contains the bone marrow part and the interior of the long bone that is made of the spongy bone and spongy bone is also called as cancellous bone it's also called as the cancellous bone okay now types of the bone so when we will see uh, now we want to histologically divide the bone so the, in that case the types of bones are immature the immature bone are still in the process of getting formed into the mature form the process of uh, osteoid uh, mineralization is still going on and that type of the bone is called as primary immature woven bone and the mature form of compact bone where the whole bone laminas has been formed as you can see the circular features which is shown here these are all laminas which has been formed so this part of the bone so if we have got a section of the bone or histological section where we can see the laminar arrangement of the laminas in the bone and also we can see the center of haveration canal all these features if we are able to see this is the mature or lamellar bone okay so let's see the uh, details of our bone membrane actually bone is covered on the outer aspect by a membrane that is called as perostium in the similar way it is also having a covering in the inner aspect that is called as endostium so there is perostium and there is endostium layer which is covering the bone membrane outer and inner aspect now they have osteogenic uh, potential and these are so these cells uh, which uh, we are talking about the membrane the membrane the perostium and endostium membrane is having cells which is required for the growth and repair so two layers are there bone membrane one is the outer one perostium and other one is the endostium so we will see the details of each part let's start with the bone membrane so in this diagram let me slightly enlarge this diagram yeah yes so when i am uh, enlarging this diagram what you can see that here we can see the outer layer this outer layer is the perostium again the perostium is made of two layers the inner layer is so if we talk about the inner layer the inner layer is cellular which has got the uh, which uh, secretes the new formation of the which is oste osteogenic secretion of osteoblast is done by this formation of new cells of the bone and the outer is the fibrous layer okay and here we can see the interior of the bone which is containing uh, the osteocytes located in the lacuna same way when you will see the inner aspect of the bone when you see the inner aspect of the bone here okay there you will get the endostium layer here is the endostium layer now i would like to give you uh, certain more details about the perostium layer of the bone so when we see the perostium layer here we can see this part of the whole layer which you are seeing is the p for perostium layer okay again the perostium layer is having an outer covering and inner covering so outer aspect it is having uh, the fibrous layer and the inner aspect it is having the cellular layer okay as you can see perostium one of the most important point is uh, of the features of uh, why we are not telling sesamoid bone as the as the uh, as the real bone features why because the layer of perostium is missing in the sesamoid bone okay perostium layer is not present and it is missing so we are not considering sesamoid bone as the true bone okay also on the articular surfaces of the uh, bones there is absence of perostium so note this this is important point for your mcq session that where is the perostium layer absent the la answer is it is absent in the sesamoid bone and the articular surfaces of the bone now so outer fibrous layer is there inner cellular layer one more thing which you can appreciate here that certain fibers so if you will see the enlarged view let me just enlarge this diagram so you have to just focus on this layer so see here now we are knowing that this whole layer which you are seeing here okay this whole layer which you are seeing is the perostium now from the perostium layer you can see some fibers are going in the interior of the bone matrix okay towards the laminas of the bone it some fibers are going so uh, let me just uh, show you these layers can you see here 
these layers are traversing inside okay these fibers actually these fibers are called as sarpleys fibers these fibers are called as sarpleys fibers and this is also considered to be anchoring fibers okay so please note down this is important has been asked uh, uh, in your mcq session also so these fibers are called as sarpleys fibers so from which layer it is arising from the parostium layer so from the parostium or the outer covering of the bone the sarpleys fibers are going inside and it is anchoring the it is giving support or anchoring the uh, interior of the bone matrix as you can see these fibers so they are also called as anchoring fibers supporting fibers okay bone fibers they are called as bone fibers sarpleys fibers anchoring fibers so done now let's move on to the next i would also like to tell you about the inner layer same way as we have talked about the parostium layer and the inner aspect close to the bone marrow or the interior of the bone we have got the endosteum layer okay so i am stretching uh, and i am uh, more talking about the points in my sessions previously also the points which is very important for your mcq session okay so it's a thin layer of vascular loose connective tissue lining the medullary cavity and the bo bone marrow spaces of the cancellous bone okay here you can see when we see the interior of the bone so here in this layer if we see the interior of the bone uh, in close association with the marrow space bone marrow space we have got the endosteum layer and you can see endosteum layer is lined by uh, the endosteal lining cell so cell lining uh, is lined cell endosteal cell lining is there okay and it can be um, required for giving the osteogenic properties also to the interior of the bone now let me show you the composition of the bone so uh, the composition of bone is as it contains cells it is important for us to know the properties of individual cells of the bone so we have uh, we can see here in the bone there is matrix which is containing water approximately 10 to 20 percent okay organic substance is there inorganic substance is there fibers collagen fibers are lying there ground substance is there minerals calcium is there phosphates are there so these are all the composition and cells also so the basically how many types of the cells so here on other side also cells and the organic and inorganic composition has been shown organic composition is of uh, mucopolysaccharides collagens and cells are osteoprogenitor cells osteocytes osteoblast and osteoclast these are four major other than that there is also um, and osteal cells lining uh, in the bone and the cells needs a special uh, description why because we have to know the individual difference between each variety of the cells so let's start with the first one that is osteoprogenitor cell or osteogenic cells okay so the first category is the osteoprogenitor cells or osteogenic cells so osteoprogenitor cells and osteogenic cells are the cells which is arising from it is uh, it is uh, formed from pluripotent stromal stem cells okay and it is mesenchymal in origin and it's if you will see the shape is similar to that the shape is similar to that of fibroblast so fibroblast is the uh, present in the connective tissue and uh, when you will see the location it is also important for us to know where is it located so where is it located so the location is uh, if we talk about the location of osteogenic cells or osteoprogenitor cell it is located in the deepest layer of parostium it is located in the deepest layer of parostium stromal component of basement membrane stromal component of basement membrane and has got bipotential stem cell uh stem it it function as stem cell what do you mean by stem cells that it has the capability of giving rise to the uh, primitive form of cells that is osteoblast cells okay so it is capable of giving uh, the formation of osteoblast cells okay so osteoprogenitor cells is one of the most important or primitive kind of cells mesenchymal in origin potential stem cells function as a potential stem cells and located in the parostium and endosteum layer now let's move on to the second variety of cell that is osteoblast cells so when i am talking about osteoblast cell it is immature bone cells and actually the shape you can see it is a more or less similar to that of plasma cells and this is the location of nucleus so this is the location of the nucleus of the osteoblast cells and what you can see the location of the nucleus is eccentric towards the periphery so roughly cuboidal in shape this is the size approximately 15 to 30 micro diameters 
uh, in uh, my, uh, micrometers in diameter and nucleus is towards the periphery means it is eccentric cytoplasm is basophilic. Now, when we go for electron microscopy what we can appreciate that in osteoblast cells there is more of endoplasmic reticulum present function what is the function so what happens this osteoblast cells is the pre uh, immature type of uh, bone cells but when it get um, uh, surrounded by a adequate amount of osteoid and mineralization takes place it transfers it to form a mature variety that is osteocyte cells so what is the function it synthesizes and secretes the osteoid mineralization of the matrix okay so that is the function of osteoblast let's move on to the next one that is osteocyte cells so this is the mature form of osteoblast cells okay so it is less basophilic and what you can see that it is having many of the projections can you see many of the projections has been seen here these are all called as cytoplasmic projections which is seen which is called as canaliculi okay the nucleus is in the center so you can appreciate n for nucleus the nucleus location is in the center so nucleus is lying in the center this is the nucleus located in the center okay and the space where osteocytes reside is called as lacunae now so many processes has been uh, you can see cytoplasmic processes are arising from the osteocytes and these processes which appears like a philodophil processes this is required for forming communication with the adjacent osteocytes okay so what is their role forms a communication okay the ap approximate size or length of canaliculis or cytoplasmic projections are 0.25 to 0.5 micrometers okay so these are all features so here today i have written all the features which is necessary for you to revise and know the shape of individual bone cells now moving to the um, next variety that is bone lining cells okay uh, you must have seen when I was showing you the endosteal lining of the bone there was flattened cells and that flattened cells are called as bone lining cells. So they are flattened bone lining cells form a continuous layer it is also uh, residing over the endosteum and perosteal layer of the bone and uh, one of the important point is the, uh, the, that that uh, it can also revert okay. So if uh, necessity is required then it can form osteoblast and again then revert back to form bone lining cells. So this is a special property of bone lining cells. Now moving on to the next osteoclast cells. So you can see when you will uh, compare the cells osteoclast actually uh, for example uh, like osteoblast cells are called as uh, uh, the giving rise to osteocytes means uh, it is important for uh, the uh, secretion of osteoid mineralization osteoclast cells are required for resorption so you can say osteocytes are bone maintainer osteocytes are bone resorbsers bone destroyer you can say okay large cells 20 to 100 micrometer is the size oval cells with multiple nucleus so here you can see the nucleus is uh, oval and it is multiple not single more than one the nucleus which is located in the osteoclast cells is more than one approximately the number varies but it can be uh, seen that it uh, the osteocytes class cells can have 15 to 20 in number these nucleus what is the role it is required for active resorption and the reason where these cells are located is in the resorption way or lacuna of house so this is also important for MCQs that where they are found. What I told you osteoclast cells are larger cells in size and required in the uh, required in the location where bone resorption is going on. So the area where they reside is called as resorption bay or lacuna in hossip. They are also termed as bone destroyer. Now structure of compact bone. So let's move on to the histological aspect that is how we are going to identify the uh, bones uh, stru uh, structure. So we have got the three systems of bone laminas. Okay, there is circumferential laminas, there is haveration system, interstitial system. So we have to study in detail. Circumferential system means uh, we have to know that um, how what is the location of the lamina. So we uh, where it is located. Uh, where is the lacuna residing what does the lacuna contains haveration system means whole of the uh, haveration system means in the center there will be a haveration canal and haveration canal is the canal through which blood vessel nerves and lymphatics enters into the bone and it is surrounded by laminas in that laminas lies the lacuna 
and in that lacuna resides the osteocyte. So all these features we have to study in detail. Let me explain you with the help of a diagram. So circumferential system. Yeah, so here uh, let me just slightly enlarge this diagram. Okay, now you are able to see. Now what you can see the outer layer again here is the, the outer aspect the layer which is shown here. This is the perostium layer. Okay, got it. Now in the center what you can see this is the structure which is residing in the center. Okay, so that structure is what is that structure? This is haveration canal. What are these? These are haveration canal. So please note down this is haveration canal. Now this haveration canal is surrounded by as you can see many circular lamina. So what is it called as? These are called as concentric lamina. This will be called as concentric lamina. So see here these are the concentric lamina which you are seeing and this concentric lamina is having the location of lacuna. So see here lacuna and it is containing osteocytes. See here. This so what happens actually when you will see the slide of bone it is not stained it is not generally stained why uh, because without staining and this becomes a very easy for us to identify and that space appears black you must have seen the slide of uh, compact bone in your histological lab, lab and when you have seen under the microscope what you have seen that uh, it is having concentric lamina. And in that concentric lamina, there is a blackened space. That blackened space is the location of lacuna. It appears black because air is trapped inside and it gives blackened appearance. And uh, the osteocytes generally when we uh, make the bone slide, we grind it. Small long bones we grind it. That is metacarpals we use or phalanges bones we use. And air get trapped inside so it appears black and osteocytes also die. But the, uh, but the impression will be there and we can see that osteocytes along with lacuna. So see here. Canaliculis, lacuna and canaliculis and osteocytes. These can be seen. I will show you an enlarged view. Don't worry about it. Okay. So actually, there is difference between haveration system and haveration canal. That should be known. So here, uh, if you will see in this diagram, this is one haveration canal. This is one haveration canal, this is other haveration canal. The connecting link between this is called as Volksmann canal. So this is Volksmann canal and these are haveration canal. Now a haveration canal from where the blood vessels and nerves and uh, uh, lymphatics are all residing. It is uh, concentrically lined by um, Mooney concentric lamina, and these are called as the circumferential these are concentric lamina and the outer lamina can you see here the outer lamina this lamina which you are seeing these are called as the circumferential lamina and the location of lamina in between the osteon and haveration system is called as interstitial lamina okay so here okay so let me slightly enlarge this diagram so that you can understand so let me enlarge it that diagram see here what I want to say that this is one haveration canal no doubt this is another haveration canal okay this is also haveration canal this is also haveration canal and these two haveration canal is connected by VC this is Volksmann canal okay now the other point which is importantly seen here is you can see it is surrounded by lamina. okay this is the lamina so which lamina is this these are these are concentric lamina these are concentric lamina. Are you understanding? Okay. And in this lamina, what you can see, there is spaces. These are the spaces. What are these? These are the spaces. Okay. These are the spaces which is residing here. Okay. And these spaces will have some projections like this. What are these? These are canaliculis. What are these? These are canaliculis for the communication it is forming. These are canaliculis. So these are canaliculis and the space here is the lacuna. This is the lacuna. And what lies inside the lacunae? Inside the lacunae what structure resides? Osteocytes. 
and this whole unit and this whole unit my dear friend this whole unit one of this unit means one of this whole unit is called as osteon or haveration system this is called as osteon or haveration system and on the outer aspect can you see here there are also laminas here these are circumferential lamina so we these are circumferential laminas and the laminas which is residing here also some laminas are there here also some lamina so laminas which is residing in between the osteon they are called as interstitial lamina they are called interstitial lamina so done let's move on to the next diagram so this is a high power view of a structure of osteon where you can uh, appreciate the detailed uh, histology part and it will be easy for you to understand now now this is the haveration canal through which blood vessels and nerves and all lymphatics are entering this is the laminas 9 to 11 12 13 14 laminas are there okay these are all laminas these are all lacunae these are all lacunae some processes or uh, canaliculi inside the there lies the osteocytes see here so we are nicely seeing lacunae we are seeing the canaliculi and inside it what rise inside the lacunae lies the osteocytes and this whole one unit or you can say the rounded structure is called as haveration system or osteon so haveration system and osteon is same thing so is it clear to you all these uh, points are especially clear to you about the location and the outer most laminas are called as cement line so outer most laminas is called as the cement line so done with this now i also want to show you another diagram where you can appreciate the communication between the two haveration canal so this is one haveration canal this is one haveration canal this is the other haveration canal this is one and this is other so what i told you there is also a communication formed between these two haveration canal and this communication is called as volksmann canal see here this communication is called as volksmann canal so now i think it is quite evident to you this is the volksmann canal and this is the haveration canal haveration canal haveration canal communicating via volksmann canal and this whole unit is called as osteon this is i for interstitial lamina so in between they are residing uh, some laminas which is located in between they are i that is interstitial lamina these are c concentric lamina and outermost will be circumferential lamina so i think is it uh, understandable to you now the structure of the bone identifying features so most commonly identifying features will be that it is not stain hne generally the compact bone is not hne stain and we can see a beautiful picture it's very nice slide having uh, the features of haveration canal and concentric laminas and osteon and haveration system being seen very easy to identify and beautiful diagram now thereafter i would also like to show you a slide of spongy or cancellous bone so what i told you whenever you see a spongy or cancellous bone the exact laminar arrangement of the bone is not visible so laminar arrangement of bone is not there you can see the osteocytes here you can see the trabeculates also a part of red bone marrow will we see so see here these are all osteocytes these are all osteocytes but exactly the laminar arrangement is not formed okay so when you will see the osteocytes along with a part of bone marrow and along with the trabeculates being formed so these are uh, not representing exactly the mature form and lying towards very close to the inner, inner bone marrow so this is the structure of cancellous or spongy bone so uh, uh, so we have done with the features today i have highlighted the histological features of uh, the bone only because generally for your image based session and for your uh, session of uh, mcqs which is asked from the bone they only target these points you should know the difference between the cells and how to identify uh, the cells that is the five types of cells which i have explained osteocytes osteoblast osteoprogenitor cells 
and endothelial lining cells and uh, osteoclast cells and also you have to know the uh, histological appearance of compact bone and that of cancellous bone. Okay, so before ending the session, I would like to tell about my free sessions on the Anacademy platform. So today also in the evening, I am taking one session, uh, MCQ session, 7.30 p.m. on the YouTube channel. And also I am ta taking sessions of uh, High Yield Anatomy MCQ series. So High Yield Anatomy MCQ series also I am taking that will be the series which will be taken on 9 p.m. session on the an academy platform conceptual anatomy so i also want to tell those students who are interested for lower limb anatomy mcqs discussion they can join me 6 pm session so this is the whole detail so 9 pm today also in the evening today is 6th and you can attend uh, my uh, 9 pm session for mcq discussion you can use the code anat10 for unlocking the sessions and also you can uh, be the session join me for the 6 pm session that is the discussion of lower limb mcqs so all the best keep studying thank you so much okay we will meet uh, in the evening 7:30 with mcq session thank you